Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to session six of Star Trek Aegir, a Star Trek Adventures actual play using the rules by Modifius Entertainment. My name is ELH the Game Master, and today we have a bit of a bottle episode mixed with a mid-season cliffhanger, because we are off next week. But uh, we're just going to sort of see what happens, and we'll go from there. Uh, in terms of announcements, pretty much what I just said, we're going to be off next week because I'll be doing masks. But after that, we're back on until another next Tuesday kind of a thing. Um, yeah, I got nothing else. Let's do introductions and get started. So, uh, Nemesis, what do you got going on? Good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Nemesis. Uh, my real name's Randy. Uh, I'm a staff member at uh, the Backbeat Ballad LARP at www.backbeatballad.com. But tonight... I'll be playing Axelin, the intrepid Talaxian uh, captain of the USS Ager. All right. You're a spy. What do you got going on? All right. I'm you're a spy. My real name is Jeremy, and uh, I'm not a staff member of the LARP, though I do occasionally show up to it. Um, I am playing Ager's uh, old Trill Borg executive officer, Dujan Roos. All right, Petrus, what do you got going on? Hey, everybody, I'm Petrus Quinas, or Peter in the real world. Um, you can find me all over the place. I don't ever say much on social media, so good luck if you find me. It's not going to do much. Um, I play the Vulcan Chief Engineer of the H here, Lieutenant Commander Victan. And certainly last but not least, Sunbay. I'm Jeff, also known as Sunbay. I play your slightly disappearing through never wearing, learning never to wear black on a pod screen. Um, Lieutenant JG Esrol. All right. He's our emergency mushroom hologram. There you, <laughs> there you go. All right, well, let's get that intro going and then we'll get started. And welcome back. So as is tradition for my Star Trek Adventures games, we have somebody doing the opening log. And that somebody is going to be none other than Captain Axelin tonight. So Axelin, if you'd kindly take it away. Captain's log, stardate 90048.1. The Aetra is currently investigating an intermittent sensor reading that seems to indicate a release of energy that's somehow greater than an Omega molecule detonation. However, there's no damage to subspace or any concrete signs of what sort of explosion or stellar phenomenon could be causing such a thing. Since the Borg haven't shown up in a while and we're still fixing problems on the ship, we're doing a full sector scan. Speaking of problems, something has corrupted the main Astra instance, someone that I've come to begin thinking of as part of the crew, not just part of the ship. The copy of Astra that's on the Proxima believes that the Borg nanoprobes, or perhaps spore interactions with the Borg nanoprobes, have caused the bioneural gel packs to develop in an unexpected manner. Normally, you would simply replace the packs and have the Proxima Astra overwrite the bad instance. However, the corrupted Astra is refusing to allow it, saying it would be akin to killing her, killing a member of my crew. She doesn't have access to any main systems, but this still needs to be resolved. Finally, we still have 52 silver blood refugees aboard the Ager. They've set up in the cargo bay as we figure out what to do with them. I myself find myself uh, 
delegating activities dealing with Cargo Bay 1 to other members of the crew, as I cannot face any members of the Silver Bloods right now, having made a difficult decision that led to the deaths of so many of their fellow beings on the planet that we abandoned to the Voth. I am hoping that I will be able to overcome this awkwardness, because the 52 survivors of that planet are now the responsibility of my ship and my crew. And log. All right. And you may have a momentum from that. And with momentum from chat, you're going to start off with two for the top of the session. Thanks, Jack. So where we're going to begin today's session is we're actually going to go to the main lounge, the main sort of 10 forward area on the ship. But it's actually located in two aft, which kind of gives you a nice look across the back of the nacelles, back of the ship, the secondary hull, and all that nonsense. But... Since this is the first time we are actually going to 2 aft, I'm going to let the players define what the club looks like or what the bar or whatever it is looks like. So let's get just something from everybody, just one quick detail from everybody, and uh, we're going to go in reverse order. We're going to start with Esrol. Oh, it's got those cheesy little bead hanging curtains. Okay. Multiple colors, yeah. I'm assuming. Oh, but of course, and lights. All right. Uh, Vectan, what are you adding to the scene? I'm going to add some of those weird retro holographic game consoles that we saw in Star Trek 3. Okay, that's a choice. That is indeed a choice. <laughs> uh, Roos, what are you going to add? Uh, in the center of the room, because uh, space is cold and inhospitable, there's going to be a giant uh, fire pit, kind of like there is, if I remember correctly, in... Uh, in uh, Pike's quarters on Strange New Worlds. Mm, that that is true. Because, so this, the... because this makes sense, right? Fire, <laughs> open fire. <laughs> so we have beads, game consoles, fire pit. All right, excellent. What are you adding? I would like there to be a large, uh, flat surfaced floor area, perhaps near the fire, <laughs> where people okay. can do stretches. Tai Chi, that sort of thing, but also can be repurposed for uh, party more more party like events as a dance floor. So it'll have integrated lighting that can do be programmed to set different moods. But normally it would just be sort of a walk around and chill out and stretch area. Does the floor have different colored lights that you have to hit in time with the certain songs that are playing? I think Chad yes. beat you too. It like was Dance DDR. Dance Federation. Dance Dance yep, Federation. Yep, that's dude. it. Mm. We're like this, Chad. <laughs> Captain Axelin will strive to maintain a high score in Dance Dance Federation. There you go. But well, we can also for... play things like Twister. Yeah, well, Twister's another good one. But yeah, for some reason or another, I'm going to let you all decide why you're there, but the four of you are in two aft. Now, whether you're together, whether you're just coming in one by one, I'm going to leave that up to you all. But again, you all are currently either coming into two aft or are already there. And I'm just going to kind of open the scene and we'll just sort of see what happens for a little bit. All right, the captain will be on the floor uh, doing some uh, guided stretches with uh, interested members of the crew who are trying to get better flexibility and health. Sort of a sort of stuff. The XO will join this. Excellent. All right, now remember, what's more important than moving our limbs? Breathing from our diaphragms or our equivalent anatomies. Mm. We've got to make sure that we're not starving our muscles or equivalent anatom anatomical uh, pieces of oxygen or equivalent atmospheric metabolism. Mm. Actually, I think Roos will, uh, will be walking through the lines of people who are doing it, just kind of offering gentle guidance. Now just the individual time. little bit here, you know. Don't put too much stress on that knee, crewman. Remember, you've recently had an injury. Let's not, not try to uh, rush the recovery process. Your body knows how to heal itself. We're just well, yeah, here to I, enable I long it. Said, I long said I was cool to do it, that, that I'd be okay to use my... And then he bends it too far and he goes, oh, my knee! Highlong opens bottles by chewing the tops off of them. I think maybe she has a different standard than the rest of us do for what is a good, healthy practice. Well, she's our doctor, so 
Yay. You make an excellent point. Speaking of which, it seems that you will be going to pay her a visit now. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll find my way to sickbay so she can do whatever it is she does. And the crewman begins limping out of, out of two aft. Remember your breathing. Breathing, sir. Got it. Mm. All right. Let's get back to it. All right. For the second form, we want to focus on the left side of our body. Just feel the space to the left of you. Become familiar with it so that you can move without looking. Sir, the fire pit's to my left. Well, move a little bit to your right, but I have some good news for you. That fire has holographic safety protocols built in, so it should try not to burn you. Well, Chad has a complication, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, the ship is undergoing massive repairs. And in fact, I think that's an excellent reason why Vectan is there, because as uh, as the crewman, as you say that, uh, Vectan, you arrive to figure out why the safety protocols in 2 aft are not working properly. Because that's a real fire right now. That is a genuine real fire. Yay! So I, I hear this as I step in, so the door is open, I hear that. Captain, safety protocols are in fact not engaged. Oh, oh. I would suggest stepping away from the fire. Yes, crewman, please, please, step away from the fire. In fact, everyone, uh, give the fire a little extra distance. It's um, extra hot today. How did we not know that already? I say to uh, Bechtan. It was a recent development, Captain. Any other safety protocols aboard uh, suddenly abandoned? You know, like emergency... Holodeck 2 is off limits field? for the time being. Okay, well, I mean, you know, not a critical system, although I did have some time booked, but... That is why I'm informing you, Captain. I will go. So, you here for a drink or a guided meditation? I'm here to repair the fire. Oh, okay. Well, good. We'll try not to distract you too much. I may partake of a beverage after my completion of this project. Sure, sure. Actually, is there anything I can do to help? I'm always interested in learning more about how the ship works. I have no idea how the hologram fire works. Well, I believe I could show you a brief course in the ODN circuits behind this. All right. Well, I reach into his toolkit and pull out whatever the least appropriate tool is and kind of look at it expectantly. You have pulled out a self-sealing symbol. Perfect. All right. Roos, so. Roos smiles and, and says, I will take over here, sir. By all means. So while that's happening, let's go to Esrol. Esrol, what are you doing in 2 aft? if you've just arrived or you've been there? Um, I say I've been there, been up at the at the bar, drinking and contemplating. Drinking and contemplating. Well, it's funny because as you're drinking and contemplating, you yourself slides into the seat next to you. It's the silver blood version of you, <laughs> but just kind of takes a seat and he looks at what you're doing and goes, "You know, I wonder what that's like uh, actually drinking something." Well, seeing as you've taken on about the best form possible on the ager, um, you need to be drinking the appropriate drink. Can can you drink? I can make a facsimile. Okay, well, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Your bartender, a warp, two warp cores. Sir, I must and inform you that this is your fourth warp core of the evening. I'm only having one of them. That would make it number five, sir. I'm not driving. I was, but I was born the near a warp core. If you're not driving, you're only the helmsman. <laughs> anyway, the bartender chuckles, and, uh, bartender chuckles and gets you your two drinks and slides them across. And I think... Warp Core is an actual established drink. I just can't remember what is in it. Oh, it was? Yeah. Doggone it. Uh, it had to come with something different. So I was thinking of something similar to a Boilermaker. Ah, okay. um, and Dorian Ale with a Rigelian Whiskey Chaser. Ooh. Hmm. Lordy. 
and drop it in and it turns um the ale begins to shift and swirl and makes it that light blue with red swirls like a demented lava lamp mm-hmm. little shimmers that they put into it mm-hmm. kind of gets like that so that's once you get in and you get that shimmering going that's when you start to drink and not before doppelganger kind of reaches out for it picks it up inspects it kind of tilts it around and then takes a tentative sip and kind of puckers his lips like it doesn't quite meet his palate but he goes you drink this yeah takes another sip grimaces Ugh. are you supposed to like it oh I never said that oh well in that case and now he actually goes at it with gusto like if he's supposed <laughs> to hate it like he's like alright <laughs> sure whatever that's just better than some of the other things that were on the menu can I say that Axlem would have given a standing order that um, that the Silverbloods wear a specific civilian outfit so they can't easily be uh, mistaken for crew members yeah we can say that because uh, that would be a really awkward situation to have multiple copies of the crew walking around. Yeah, we'll say for sake of argument that they wear uh, similar to what my avatar's wearing. They kind of are wearing uh, white jumpsuits. Perfect, perfect. Star Trek the movie uniforms, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of space beige. Um, okay, cool. Uh, Axelon seems to become distracted in his repairs upon seeing a silver blood talking with uh, with Esrel. Andrew, your worst nightmare. It's two Esrels. Captain, are you in distress? Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. I wasn't listening. Um, you seem to have lost focus. And chat complication says that his sleeve's on fire, too. I look down and I go, oh, whoa. Uh, yeah, I have left lost focus. I attempt to put out my sleeve. <laughs> you can put out your sleeve. Well, you know what? Let's make it a roll, because why do not? Roll, you know? do roll. Just make it a roll. Uh, right, stop, drop, and roll. Fitness and security, I guess? Sure. Fitness, security, difficulty reasonable. of one. Because surely uh, I would say sh- high temperature survivalism was a really good uh, focus, but I, did, I don't have that anymore. So. No, no, that was temporary. I'm guessing Mach Bara wouldn't help here. No. I, I fight the fire. Yeah, literally. Okay, you get a momentum for your troubles. That's all we care about. Oof. So you're up to three. Oof. Damn it. Uh, yeah, not paying as much attention as I should. I agree. Sorry about that. Hmm. On the plus side, we're definitely certain we haven't fixed it yet. Indeed. So, what comes next? We need to he replace said, the translator here. All right. Well, I'll hold the light for you. Just get flashbacks to all those times I'd help my uncle with his sailboat and I'd had to hold the light and he'd be swearing yep. up a storm and I'd be like, I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It's not you, it's this effing boat. I hate it so much. But well, yeah, at least Vulcans don't curse. So. Aziz, light! <laughs> Let's go to Roos for a moment. And Roos, as you're kind of taking over the class, you notice that mm-hmm. uh, the main version of Astra, not the one from the Proxmo, but the main version of Astra has joined you in the class. And she is actually changed from her usual lightning self. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, she is her at least her chosen form was one of a ten key, kind of a shape shifting uh, mm-hmm. mercurial species. Instead of the lightning and sort of sparky sort of avatar, she's now almost like a sandstorm. So lots of browns, lots of horns, and uh, her hair seems to be like quite literally shifting sand. Um, that sort of tapers and flows throughout her entire body. Um, But she just seems to be half going through the motions that you're teaching. Like, she's not fully in the class, but she's at least attempting to do something, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. I make a note of this and slowly guide the... and begin to guide the, um, the class to a close. And my, if I guess what your intention is, once everybody else is left, you're going to talk to Astra? That is my intent, yes. Excellent. Then we'll say that's what happens. You bring the class to a close. 
Uh, the ensigns, lieutenants, and crewmen all pick up their gear and leave, leaving just you and Astra on what I guess we're going to call the platform in two aft. Would you care to join me at a table? Yeah, that, uh, that might be best. So we leave the floor and go to a table. Probably he, he would guide to, he would guide her to a secluded one. Say, you take a seat, she does the same, and uh, she's just kind of almost not quite shell shocked, but she's definitely staring off into space. Did you come for meditation? To be honest, I, I don't know what I came for. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna be straight with you, sir. Uh, I know I'm losing my mind quite literally, and the only way to fix it is death. At least when it comes to computer programs like myself, but it terrifies me. But also losing my mind terrifies me, and I don't know what to do. Would it help if I said that I empathized? Would it help if I said that I knew how you feel? Right. Sorry, you were bored. I can't imagine that's a pleasant process at all. There were moments over the years, but for the most part, I'm sorry. What do you, what, tell me what you feel. Fear. Only fear doubt of everything be more specific and almost as if to show off uh, something she kind of throws her hand over towards where the holographic fire where the captain and Victan are working and <laughs> nothing happens like she waves as if she's done something to the fire, but nothing visual, audio, whatever happens. Mm -hmm. And she says, now I realize I've been disconnected from main systems, but I can't even modify holographic fire anymore. I used to run the ship. I was the ship. And now I'm, what, just an errant hologram? Do you feel that that's your entire purpose? Well, that's also what some of the fear is. I don't know that I have a purpose anymore. Find one. How? Same way everything else that is alive does. You do know that there's not enough space for the other Astra to come into the main computer core, right? That's a problem we will have to solve together, I believe. Right. Right. Well, I wonder, uh, have all of the Silverbloods assumed um, doppelganger identities? Um, well, the ones that feel like taking form, yeah, they've uh, kind of got like a hot tub thing filled with Silverblood liquid, I guess, in Cargo Bay 1. But uh, those that have taken form have indeed uh, replicated some of the crew with... with Obviously, the jumpsuits like the S are all over there. Can you? I have a I have a problem for you. Should you wish to consider it? I got nothing else going on. What do you got? What do you know of how the Silver Bloods work? You should have access to our to read. You should have read only access to our sensors to our databases. I can tell you that they're good shape changers. They can replicate technology as well as people. They can replicate technology and people, yes. Wait a second. Are you not technology and people? Are you I saying that I should go speak with the silver blood? Or consider the problem. It would be something for you to put your mind into. Something to consider, yes. She kind of holds her mouth open like she's thought of something and she's processing it. 
And it's one of those things where if you want to roll me an insight and con or an insight and command at a difficulty of two, I might give you a little bit of an insight here. If you have anything related to body language, people reading, uh, AI I was gonna intelligence. Say, I was going to say coaching and instruction because I've been trying to get her here. That'll also work, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I would like to spend one of these. I would like to spend one of these momentum. All right. If that's okay with everybody. Very much so. Right. Survey says only one success, but I'm going to let you succeed mm -hmm. at cost where. Okay. It's one of those things where you see that she's come to a conclusion, but it's one of those conclusions where it's like you either do something. I don't know what it is. Right. You don't it's know gonna... what it is, but you know that look because you've taught at the academy. It's the look of someone who's had a really bad idea, but they don't know it's a bad idea. So they're they're super eager and they're excited. And they just show telltale signs that they know part of this plan is a bad idea, but they obviously don't know how bad it is, if that makes any sense. Why don't you tell me what you have come to? Uh... Yeah. And I will even roll a presence command to try and convince her to do so. Sure, let's try and get you some momentum real quick. But uh, as you're rolling that, let's quickly go to Esrall and Vect and then we'll go to the captain in uh, Vectan. So Esrall, at this point, uh, your doppelganger has finished uh, his warp core. He's actually ordered another. And he's still grimacing. He's doing the data thing where it's like, oh, this is repulsive. Another? Exactly. Yes, please. Exactly. You know, and he's he's had about three at this point. He's like, God. I find this absolutely vulgar. Why would anybody... Hold on. He takes a drink. No, I still hate it. Eventually, that will lessen to just a strong dislike. Bartender, double strong. I feel something tingling in my fingers. <laughs> He starts losing concentration. He's, the astral features start to melt a little bit. Yeah. No, the best so you part don't about feel... silver blood is that they don't they don't have a circulatory system. So yeah. you know. Oh uh, yeah. It's just a so pool. You don't feel anything from that. That that dream. I mean, mimicking you. I'm mimicking your taste buds so that I can taste it, but. I'm not really uh, doing anything with the liquid. Like it's, it's it's weird. Like I uh, have a proximity or a facsimile of a stomach, a bullion stomach, but it's not doing anything. It, the replication goes that deep. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's kind of crazy what we can do. I mean, if you give us long enough, you know, I only got a very brief sample from you, so I only I only do surface level, but. Uh, mm. If I hang around you long enough, I could replicate you down to almost the molecule. And it would be very hard for, uh, what was that scary doctor's name? Uh, High Long? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it would be very difficult for her to be able to tell the difference between me and you. It wouldn't be good for either of us because her way to find out would be to chop us in two to see... Oh, right. I guess, I mean, I could just grow the arm back, but you would kind of, oh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that idea. I don't know. It kind of amuses me. <laughs> I'm sure it would. Um, promise you won't do that. Oh, no, I, I only intend okay. to replicate you at a surface level until I find my own identity. What will it, how do you go about finding your own identity? That I have absolutely no clue. Um, would you need more exposure to people from the Federation, the different just... races and the histories, the, um, the different media, literature? These are all things. Yes. All of that would help. Let me, let me talk to the XO and see if we can go with the captain and see if we can get that type of information to... You and the, I don't want to just keep saying silver bloods. Do we, is there another way we can refer to you? To um, you, your people? 
No, not that I'm aware of, but I don't find the term offensive. Okay. Um, yeah, let me, yeah, yeah, that'll, that'll be good. So as you get ready to go walk over to Rus, let's go to the captain and Vectan. So you, at the, this point, both of you have finished repairing the holographic fire, and uh, the safeties are back on. It is now no longer on. burning. Uh, I stick my uh, slightly singed hand in there just to, yeah, yeah, pretty good. Hmm. Thank you for That's your nice. assistance, Captain. Well, you know, thanks for humoring me. I'm not sure I did that much to assist, but hey, I'm learning. You did indeed. How about I buy you a drink? I see Esrel over at the bar. We can, uh, we can uh, commiserate. Of course. All right. Uh, I would by now definitely have figured out what most of the uh, senior crew members' favorite drinks are. So I, I order a uh, wheatgrass smoothie for myself and a, uh, or no, I'm going to order a uh, Andorian chocolate milk with a bendy or a crazy straw for myself. And there then whatever go. it is yeah. that Vectan likes for my associate here. Um, he's going to be boring and just drink black tea. There you go. All right. Both drinks are delivered. Oh, yeah. Enjoy the uh, variants five of the uh, Bendy Straw, the Crazy Straw, however many versions we have now. I'm kind of cycling through. 652. Uh, Mr. Ezreal, Mr. Ezreal, what are you, uh, the two of you uh, talking about? You don't mind my How much asking. I absolutely hate a warp core. Well, that's kind of awkward because uh, that's uh, sort of the power of source of the ship we're on no I mean this drink it's absolutely horrid takes a giant swig like seriously why would anybody drink this I myself am not very far hand leans them. over may I uh, please takes it sniffs it takes a sip fitness medicine difficulty too because <laughs> <laughs> you took the double strong one oh, oh. that's right <laughs> Or did he? Yeah, I'm just going to roll this straight. I don't have anything that will modify it, and I just want to see what happens. All right, All right one oh. success. <laughs> so uh, do you want to outright fail, or do you want to succeed with a complication? Let's succeed with a complication, because he is Vulcan, so he can handle stuff. Mostly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you it's, it's the equivalent of, like, biting into a ghost pepper, but Vulcan, so you have a little bit more stamina and a little bit more... What is it? Chutzpah or whatever the yeah, word is chutzpah, that I can't. Yeah. Chutzpah, yeah. So you're not floored by it, but you're definitely doing that thing where, like, in real life, if you take a shot of scotch just straight. You start with, coughing. Yeah, you start coughing. And I think it's the first time anyone has seen you break character like this, at least in my <laughs> imagination. Feel free to say oh, yeah, otherwise. For sure. This is the first time you see, like, his eyes watering. <laughs> it's like. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> A little spicier than you were expecting there, eh? <laughs> uh, I'm told Seems there's illogical to ingest such <clears throat> beverages. And I hand it back. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> and he takes a swig, doesn't even bat an eye. Like, why would anybody want this? Bartender, I another. Think that's, I think that's what our silver blood associate was trying to communicate, Lieutenant Commander. Uh, are you going to be all right? Should I call a doctor? I <clears throat> <clears throat> will be fine. <laughs> it's a Eventually. little. It's a battery acid aftertaste. You is know that what? what that uh, flavor is. I, I, I'm going to bow to peer pressure and have one myself, bartender. While you're making those up, I sir, I feel like it would be rude of up. me to uh, make fun of everyone for drinking them and not have one myself. Would you prefer it regular strength or double strength, sir? Uh, whatever it is that uh, injured my comrade here is double perfect. strength. Aye, very well. Vectan's right. eyebrow shoots oh. up. Dear All man. right, so we're going to do a fitness medicine difficulty of two for you, Captain, and then we're going to go back to Roos. And I did see your roll from earlier, Roos. You did succeed. Would uh, street smarts apply here? <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> there you go. Two successes. You handle it just fine. That is uh, that's a spicy meatball, my friend. I can see why your reaction was so extreme. Might I suggest to both our Silver Blood associate and the Lieutenant Commander here uh, sticking to a nice wheatgrass smoothie? Really, you know, 
clears everything up. What what was that you were drinking before, Captain? Uh, it looks like some sort of brownish liquid with a crazy straw. And Dorian chocolate milk, my favorite beverage. Bartender, forget the warp core. Bring me a and Dorian chocolate milk. Ooh, on top of the warp course? Why not? <laughs> Everyone makes the same mistake. It's a team building exercise. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> and as that's all happening, we're going to go back to Roos. So Roos, your presence command was successful, which means Astra copy is going to tell you. And Astra says, all right, so sir, this is going to sound really crazy, but hear me out. So most of the silver blood basically like infants, right? They don't really have an identity. They don't really have a brain. They're just sort of mimetic gel, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm thinking is I could take myself from the computer core, freeing it up for the real Astra from the Proxima and take over or become a silver blood my mind to your mind would this involve would you be adding your own substance as more of the mimetic gel or would you be seizing control of some of this nascent essence that is admittedly the the sticking point, sir. I don't know the ethicality or legality of this. There's not really then precedence we, that I'm able to find. Then we ask. Well, how do we ask something that doesn't know how to communicate? We ask Vectan. Well, he seems to be over at the bar and... The not that S one, I don't are... think. Not now? No, not that one. Oh, you mean the the doppelganger Vectan? Vectan. Yes. Wouldn't that... He, it, has demonstrated leadership, in a way, speaking for the rest. It would know itself better than others, would it not? It would, it would. Yeah, I like that idea. Let's uh, let's go find uh, not Vectan. Now, I must ask you to pledge something. Go ahead. We can take no. We can take no action until we, we we can take no positive action until we speak with the captain. Okay. But I would but I would not recommend speaking with the captain until we have all of our ducks in a row, as it were. And this is the hard one, the second one. We can't, you can't, simply take over if the silver blood, the entity in aggregate, denies your request. I wasn't planning to do so, sir, but I can definitely understand that Earth Media has quite a number of instances where that has happened. We don't steal. Especially especially not lives. But I am cautiously optimistic. Well, it's, right, it's ironic, because right as you say cautiously optimistic, uh, the ship violently lurches to the left, and in fact, I'm going to say that all of you that are currently seated are violently flung from your chairs as the inertial dampeners do their best to not make you fling against the windows and the walls. But uh, after a moment, as the ship goes automatically to red alert, um, the bridge reports in and says, uh, bridge to uh, Captain Axelon. Captain speaking. Uh, Sir, we were just hit by, I don't know, sensors are still trying to make sense of it, but we were just hit by something mighty powerful. We are about 30% power to the shields. All right, divert everything you can to the shields. I'll be there momentarily. I am already on my way to the bridge. (laughs) Shall I call for senior staff to the bridge? They're all here with me. Staff, with me. Is this the kind of booze you can kind of shake off? Yeah, thankfully this isn't the real booze. Um, This is synthol, yeah. I shake it off. 
But yeah, I, I was going to say, I toss, uh, I reach behind the bar as I'm passing and grab the grab some of the kind of single-use hypo sprays that I'm going to pretend exist and just start throwing them to our uh, to our uh, crew. Okay. We we will continue this conversation later. He says over his shoulder. The Astra. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. To the bridge. To the bridge. To the bridge. All right. So when you emerge on the bridge, uh, the only difference that you would see from normal is that uh, some of the deck plating and the ceiling has collapsed a little bit. So there's a little bit of exposed ODN line. But uh, in general, uh, as all of you sit down and uh, the ensign gets out of the chair and reports, uh, well, sir, uh, we've run a full diagnostic. The computer doesn't know what the hell hit us. I mean, it was a very large energy discharge, but... It's not in the same order of magnitude that caused us to go on the search in the first place, if that makes any sense. Still, could be a terrible sign. The search, the, the thing that we're searching for is plenty of energy to, to obliterate the ship if it hits us, right? That is correct, sir. But uh, I believe Vectan is, Lieutenant Commander Vectan is much more qualified to answer that question than I am. Damage report. And yeah, back ten, you can make up as much damage as you want. Shields are obviously down to thirty percent, Captain. The there is a multiple power fluctuations on deck six. Hollow deck two is now completely offline. The shuttle bay will need some repairs as some of the shuttle bay docking stations have become, as you say, off kilter. Multiple crew quarters have been set awry. Various ODN discharges on multiple decks. No injuries. All right, Mr. Ruse, compose a quick message to Shuttle Bay or to Cargo Bay One, assuring them that we're on top of the danger and that they need to gather in there and uh, await our order to leave. And uh, Mr. Esrell, project the angle of impact of the last. Uh, the last strike and see if you can calculate some sort of escape vector or evasive maneuvers we can use if we are hit by the same thing again. Hi, sir. All right, Esrall, reason, com- uh, reason con, difficulty of three here. I know, reason, totally a power stat for you. Um, I think I need use one of those momentum. I'll activate cautious con. And assuming flight controls? Yep, would apply. Only one success. So. Cautious con? You can reroll one. So we get one in. There you go. The three you want. So, since you succeeded, I'm going to say that you not only know the direction in space where this burst of energy came from, but you can pilot away from it as well. So, you both know where it came from and how to get away from it. Course is plotted, sir. And displaying now. So, yeah. when you display... Let me let me clarify. Are you displaying the course you're going to follow or are you displaying what where it came from? Yes. So both at the same time. Okay. Red will be the red is our egress if we need to, and the blue is where it came from. Yeah. So when the view screen changes to show that, uh, what you see is almost like a crack in reality where there's there's like a crack in the wall, and it's like glowing with what seems to be purple light, but it's it's a very small crack. It's like maybe the size of a a VW Beetle. Like, it's a very, very small crack in reality. Magnify that sector there. Lieutenant Commander Vectan, what are we looking at? Allow me to scan, Captain. Vectan, if you want to give me a reason science or a reason engineering, uh, the Ager will assist you with a sensor science. The difficulty on this will remain a three. However, I am going to make the complication from chat be that, well, your complication range is now a 17 to 20. For reasons that will become apparent if you roll a complication. So that's a 2? 
Yes. Or three. Okay. Uh, 17 would actually be 17, 18, 19, 20. I think it's a four three. you would put in. Four. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, quantum mechanics as a focus. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, you got an assist from Ajer, so good stuff there. I'm going to use a momentum to get one more die, if that's okay. all right with everyone. Good call. Yeah. Last one, then. Yep. No, you just got one from Chad as well. All right, well, uh, four total successes means that you're actually at two momentum. Well done. So, Vectan, what you're seeing is a high burst of plasma creeping through what might be a subspace node. And for those who need a reminder what a subspace node is, it's basically a... It's like a bubble of subspace, which has... And I say this unironically... A lot of the times it's bigger on the inside, where you can have entire realities within the subspace node. Captain, this appears to be escaping plasma from the interior of a subspace node that is ahead. Do you mean to tell me that we're potentially observing a sector of subspace that's encroaching upon real space? Potentially, Captain. At least a pocket of subspace that contains if this is the energy that is escaping, something of great magnitude. Indeed. Either the energy we detected escaped from this realm of subspace or perhaps caused some sort of breach that we're now witnessing. In either case, it definitely bears further investigation. Indeed, Captain. Let's see if we can get a probe to approach it without it being obliterated. Um, Mr. Estrel, see if you can uh, navigate that probe. I think it's going to be a little more than letting a automated navigation system control it. And do, sir? Remember, if this is what we think it is, energy is probably emerging from a point where you can approach from behind very safely and then get in. Is energy only coming in one direction? The probe will tell I mean, us. We'll certainly know more when we get there, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I give him a pat on the shoulder from standing from my uh, chair to his station, but you got this. He got a pair of, like, VR goggles. Oh. Esrol, if you want to give me a, let's call this a daring and a con, difficulty of four. Ooh. Um... Let's pop both momentum and one threat okay. for Ooh. two dice. Uh, it would be either two momentum, one threat, or two threat, one momentum for four dice total. Uh, two momentum, one threat. Okay. That'll give me four. Should do four dice. And don't worry, yeah, Grandmother. Like I do see that complication from chat. Ooh. Well, <laughs> if I remember correctly, you can born near warp core that complication, but that is only still only three successes. Though I guess you do have cautious con. There we go. So we'll do cautious con first. That's only one dice, right? Yeah, it's yep. only one. <laughs> I didn't get it. it really <laughs> That's what I was hoping. <laughs> so let's roll that challenge die. One in 400 odds there, everybody. Okay, hey, I believe with an effect it activates, correct? Uh, there you go. Uh, let's see. Yes. Yep, it's an effect. It is ignored. All right, so do you want to succeed with complication? Because what's difficulty for? Do you want to succeed with complication, or do you want to just fail? Uh, succeed with complication. Okay. So you get the probe going behind the crack in reality but after a moment uh, as you sw swing around the crack in reality the probe disappears and the telemetry disappears for the briefest of seconds but then it begins transmitting again and I'm going to play a little bit of music here um, when you get the image of what's on the other side it doesn't make any sense I mean what you're seeing is physically, quantumly, 
impossible. Because what you see is the interior of the subspace node, like the interior of like a Dyson sphere. But instead of a normal sized sun, this is a sun that is massive. And when I say massive, I mean multiple times the size of the solar system. This is so big of a star that it is theoretically impossible to exist. Like a black hole star. Yeah, exactly. Sir, I must have done something wrong as I was flying through there because that I'm getting does not make any sense. Well, let's just gather data now before we start gathering conclusions. But yeah, that that uh, measurement seems to be off by orders of magnitude. It's at least theoretically possible, Captain. None have been right. observed. Put the ship on the other side of the uh, energy emission part of this subspace rift. Let's hope it doesn't rotate. I don't want a flare or any other energy from that massive star striking our shields. Are there signs of life or technological development on the other side? As far as you can tell, nothing at the moment, but you could run a sensor scan via the probe. That is something you could do. Sensor scan specifically for known transmission frequencies, energy signatures, and warp wakes. And uh, Peter, you? everything I gave you, you can now reveal it. Well, Captain, it does, in fact, appear to be what you call a black hole star. Although it doesn't seem possible that one should exist. This particular star is 30 times wider than the Earth solar system. And it is, the intense magnetic fields that we are observing are the things that are jettisoning the plasma from the poles that are in penetrating the subspace field. Amazing. If but I'm remembering Captain, right from my astrophysics course, black hole suns were only capable of existing in our universe during the very, very early phases after the Big Bang. Correct. When matter was exceptionally dense. The laws of physics assume that we would never be able to support the existence of something like that now. Indeed. Uh, evidently, the laws of physics or the composition of the universe inside of this subs subspace bubble are different than our current universe. But you asked if there were warp fields or any other signs of life, Captain. Yes. There appears to be a containment field surrounding this star, as this star appears to be at the stage where it should, in fact, destroy itself. But there is a field, and that field is emanating from a structure Wow. that is nearby just just at the limit of what our metaphasic shielding of, on the Aegir can withstand so we are able to approach this facility but it itself is protected by metaphasic shield that we may be able to pierce using radion beams if my sensors are telling me accurate information can we relay communications through the probe that's in there already perhaps send them a hail we can attempt it, Captain. I do not guarantee that we will get a response. It's certainly the first thing we should try. I may point out that there is likely a breathable atmosphere, and we are able to transmit transporter beams. I hate to let my curiosity get the better of me, though, sir. Let's, um, let's hold off on that for just now. Send them hails on uh, known frequencies and see if we can't break, uh, create some sort of communication. Of course, Captain. Now, if I'm remembering right from astrophysics, where I mostly focused on astronavigation, black hole stars inevitably collapse because their interiors contain a singularity. Correct. So if this thing is on the verge of collapse, the amount of energy that it could release if that sustaining field were damaged in some way would be, well, just devastating. Correct. My goodness. How could they have built such a containment field? I mean, even the, just the gravitation alone 
would make it nearly impossible to get any normal kind of matter nearby. It is a feat Amazing. of engineering heretofore unknown. Are we registering any... Uh, does any of the technology register as anything we have encountered in the uh, anything we have encountered before? Good question. Not necessarily the science, but um, every piece of electronics has a signature. What I would tell you, no known anything. Like even going back to the, I forget what they're called in. Uh, what was it? That one? Is it the chase? that episode where we see the progenitors Mm -hmm. um not even them this is entirely new no known energy signature commander in any database amazing still no responses on hailing frequencies none captain all right I'd like to see senior crew in my uh, ready room. Helmsman, take over. Maintain this course and heading. Unless as you the wish, energy sir, coming out of that. As Joy Oof. comes up out of her chair. <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> if the energy coming out of that rift shifts, keep us at the same uh, attitude towards it, please. As you wish, sir, engaging the side by side protocol. I give her an odd look as uh, Axelon's never met Ensign Joy, but okay. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I go to my ready room. <laughs> That's not what the protocol's called. <laughs> my apologies, sir. Perhaps you can instruct me later. Ensign, I believe it is the partner protocol. <laughs> Second thought, that's not much better, sir. <laughs> I didn't name it. All right, so everybody into the captain's ready room is what I just heard. Quickly. All right. Axlund's looking a little uh, anxious. So I really want to take the ship in there, but it seems an awfully risky move. What do you think? Sir, may I remind you that we are carrying 52 refugees of a species that is extremely rare in the galaxy as far as we know it. I mean, and that is a, it's a good point. Um, on the other hand, the opportunity, we've never, Starfleet has never gotten readings like this. This may be a once in a universe chance to learn so much. Just that star Commander, alone could tell us so much. Commander Vectan, tell us more about what it would take to take Ager into this environment and the possible ramifications. Well, Commander, if we are able to reinforce our shields, obviously we have metaphasic shields to approach solar bodies, but we would need to increase their output by a factor of 10 at least. And it is possible. It is possible, but it would take several hours to complete. I could also look into potentially retrofitting the Proxima to approximate the necessary requirements. I could run a few simulations. I cannot guarantee that she would be able to withstand the gravitational forces. What if we were to put the refugees on the Proxima and leave it on this side of the rift? The Proxima is not large enough to contain biological beings of that of that number. Lieutenant. If if the Silverbloods were willing to return to a liquid state, it could hold all of them. However, I do not know if that is possible. We should summon a representative of the Silverbloods here to ask them what they think. It would be irresponsible to risk their lives. Well, Peter, if you want to talk to yourself right now, the uh, doppelganger of Vectan can appear at a dramatically appropriate moment. Yeah, so Vec2 shall appear. In the meantime, I admit that I am not as familiar with the mycelial network as I perhaps should be as executive officer of this ship. 
But I must ask, is that space connected in some way to our instance, I suppose, of the mycelial network? I mean, Could I was we not believe that the mycelial network connects to everything in some way, but it might be very convoluted. Could we not perhaps transit the space that way without having to interact with the with normal space? space barrier. That is an excellent question. That is another avenue that we might pursue. It would give us an opportunity to not disturb the subspace barrier any more than the star itself is, thereby reducing the possibility of rupture. Our spore drive technology is already on the fritz and has been damaged. I'd like to consider that a plan B. In the end, the spore drive is still our best chance of getting back to Federation space. Also, Commander, is there a... What is the... Is there any risk to the fabric of subspace or this sector in general if we interact with the subspace barrier in some negative manner or if we interact with the superstar inside that I'm going to ask ELH roll me a insight engineering difficulty of one quantum mechanics oh yeah Ooh. Oh my! I uh, I think that's gonna be a whole lot of you don't know, and I think that is when your doppelganger arrives to make a witty remark. It seems that your chief engineer is at a loss for words. I posed the same question to you then. <clears throat> I did not hear the question. Let's bring up the telemetry data we yeah. have gathered thus far so that we can bring our guest up to speed on what we're looking at. Spend a couple of minutes just describing what we've done so far. Hmm. Our question is, what is the likelihood of our entering this window in turning it into a door? Do I get to try again? Yes. Yeah, you get to try again. That's my top game. I think your doppelganger gets a chance here. Can't we all get backup characters? <laughs> I mean, technically, if you I mean, hang out with the silver blood. There's tons of biomimetic gel down there. Yeah. <laughs> so, inside engineering? Yep, inside engineering again, exact same rule. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ooh. your doppelganger knows. <laughs> uh, that's going to be uh, two momentum, even. So, yeah, um, two things. One... If you're careful enough, you won't pop the bubble, meaning you can transition through the subspace barrier without popping the bubble. The problem is, as somebody in chat and as you all have sort of stumbled onto it in brief, if that sun leaves the bubble, the effect on surrounding subspace is, I there's no words for it, that's how monumental it is. Especially yeah, if that I star explodes, Yeah, I remember the um, the subspace speed limit and everything that uh, that led up to it. Or sorry, the the, the warp speed limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, it seems to me that it's exactly as likely that the people keeping that, uh, or the the civilization that's keeping that star in containment, could need our help as much as our presence there could disrupt their highly advanced technology we certainly don't have any indication that there's undue risk beyond the obvious risk of taking our ship into unknown waters i'm still leaning towards going in can somebody talk me out of it speak freely please we have brought we have invited you here because 52 of you are here you are refugees aboard our ship Correct. What say you to this course of action? You have obviously have a grasp of the ramifications. I ask you this, Commander. 
if we were to attempt to escape or even remain outside of this bubble, if something were to go awry, is there any chance, any probable reality in which we could outrun the outcome of this star destructing? You would know the answer better than I. In that lies my answer, Commander. Well, the Proxima can travel faster than light. I don't think natural phenomena can. But with a subspace tear, I'm not entirely sure I know. Precisely. Neither, Neither do we know if we would have a reaction time fa fast enough to respond. Well, that is very true. My people will remain with you, Captain. We trust our existence into your hands. No pressure or anything, right? No more than the rest of your crew. As an aside, I would I wish to speak with you at some point in the future if this ends well. Of course, Commander. All right. Do you have um, any further need of me? Please tell your uh, fellow Silverbloods that uh, we are making preparations to enter an unknown sector of space through a spatial anomaly and investigate a incredibly rare astral phenomenon and advanced civilization. Of course, Captain. May I request that a view screen be permitted in Cargo Bay 1 so that we may observe your efforts? Of course. Thank you. Once uh, Vectan leaves, or Vec2 leaves, uh, I say to uh, Lieutenant Ezreal, or uh, Ezreal, keep in mind that view screen, video, no audio. I, I don't think I need that entire shuttle bay hearing all of our orders and deliberations. I think you're muted, Sambay. Almost made it through. <laughs> Bunch of background chatter behind me. Um, aye, sir. All right, all right. Everyone make pre preparations. I want to see a simulation on the uh, Proxima going through that rift as a secondary plan, and our, let's consider our primary plan taking the Ager through that rift. Understood, sir. And with that, that is where we're going to go to our five to ten minute break. We'll be back shortly, everybody. Stick around. All right, and welcome back to part two of session six of Star Trek Age Year, where if you're just joining us, we had a little bit of uh, downtime in two aft, the Age Year's premier sup uh, supreme officer, senior officer lounge. And uh, then it was discovered that the Age Year has stumbled upon a subspace node in which there is apparently a black hole star, something that shouldn't exist in the current time at all so yeah that's a thing and the players are getting ready to go check out this black hole star which apparently is being kept from exploding by an alien civilization or an alien facility that matches not on records standard star trek shit at the end of the day but yeah uh we resume with you all on the bridge vectan what i would tell you is that you have run the numbers the numbers say that you have about a 50-50 shot of uh, getting through with the Proxima. And getting through with the Aegir is a little bit more favorable at a 65-35. Captain, I have completed the simulations that you requested. The simulation for the Proxima had a 50% chance success rate. And the simulation for taking the Aegir into the anomaly had a 65% chance. 65%, really? Yes, Captain. That's... That is not very high, Lieutenant Commander. <clears throat> is there anything we can do to bolster those numbers? We can attempt to remodulate the metaphasic shield harmonics to reinforce them 
but I do not know that it would add our statistical probability of survival by much. I've been going through my uh, journals here from when I was in the academy. I actually uh, dated for quite a bit of time while I was there someone who was a uh, astrophysics major who specialized in subspace astrophysics. I attempt to invoke my widely traveled uh, talent. All right. I believe that gives me what? Two threat? One threat? One threat. Yeah, I accidentally added, I accidentally subtracted two momentum because I forgot it wasn't the way my last character worked. But I would like to offer the GM one threat in exchange for gaining a temporary focus in subspace astrophysics. Go for it. I'm just refreshing myself in what I learned then. Let me take a look at the uh, simulation and see if there's any insights I can offer. Of course, I attempt to, and I attempt to think if there's any brilliant ideas I can do to boost our chances here. All right, insight or reason plus engineering. Uh, from chat, you have uh, three momentum at the moment. So, yeah. Anything related just to quantum physics, uh, metaphasic shielding, anything of that nature would apply here as a focus. May I, I would assist? assume astromet astrometrics and uh, starship tactics would not apply? No, unfortunately, astrometrics would have gotten you to see the star, but it's not going to help you survive the star, unfortunately. And That's yes, gotcha. Vectan, you may assist. And I don't think Insight it's a difficulty. A uh, difficulty of three on this. Insight engineering, right? Well, that it doesn't well matter because unless I've the ever captain done. can reroll uh, one of those. Mind. <laughs> uh, is there something I could do with determination? You, if you want to tap a value, you could reroll as many dice as you want. Well, uh, am I challenging? No, nah, just use them. In which case, uh, adventure awaits and drink deeply from the cup of life for both... I feel like they apply. Sure, yeah, that would definitely work for your uh, determination. So yeah, you may reroll as uh, as many of those die as you want. I bet you can guess how many I want to roll. <laughs> yeah, probably all four. <laughs> nah. All oh right, my! Well, you got one, <laughs> which means if Vectan actually crits on his success, you'll manage to do it. So inside engineer. Four dice, y'all. Oh. Two nineteen and an eighteen. Help. That's amazing. So I say again. Quantum mechanics focus help. Yes, quantum will apply. Okay, well. All right. No. Nope. <laughs> so uh, you two put your heads together, and uh, I'm gonna say, unfortunately, nah, you got nothing. This is really impressive work, Lieutenant Commander. I uh, I can't think of anything I could possibly add here. You've thought of everything I thought of, and way more. Well, I appreciate the compliment, Captain. I am still disappointed that we were not able to come up with another solution. And that was with me being the pilot, sir? Yes, Lieutenant. Okay. I, I'm afraid I don't understand the question. Uh, who else would be the pilot? Well, Perhaps just... he is referring to me, sir. Oh, what right. If... It's in... Joy, sir. It's in Joy, right. Do um, you have special experience with uh, this sort of situation? Subspace? Oh, I'm quite experienced, sir. In all sorts of situations. And I don't believe I'm going to say this, but what about if Joy and I piloted together? A union, sir. The, so to speak. Uh, would, would that help? I'm, I'm afraid I don't know enough about the uh, ins and outs of navigation to see how that would help, but... Uh... One controlling the vertical, one controlling the horizontal. Oh, the horizontal's my favorite. I walked right into that one. <laughs> yeah. Let's rerun the simulation with that uh, variable accounted for. Let's see what we get. Much may I, pro want may I propose a, May I propose another addition? Please, another please do. Addition. Yes, please, please, please do that. Yes. We do have two very talented engineers possibly available to us. Would that increase our odds of success? We have another S roll as well. Another me. I would very strongly like to not expose too many non-Starfleet personnel to the inner workings of the Ager. That's a relatively high priority for us on this mission. Understood, sir. So shall I retain simply the two pilots? Let's see what we get. 
We if the two of you would be so kind as to help uh, help the lieutenant commander with the uh, simulation. No, sir. I kind of tap my foot waiting. All right, so since you're redoing the simulation, the difficulty is way down. It's only a difficulty of one, but it is, again, a reason or insight plus engineering. Engineering. Focus applies. Here goes. No. I mean, I got the success, but... Yeah, oh, and you got a complication from chat, too, because, you know, Chat. chat is like, you know... So, uh, Joy is extremely enthused by this plan. <laughs> yeah, it's the complication. Um, so <laughs> the success rate does go up to 70 30, but, um, yeah, I think unfortunately the complication is going to have to be that you're gonna risk some damage to the ship if you try it this way. It would seem, Captain, that while using two pilots does increase our probability of survival by 5%, it does also increase the risk to the ship of damage in spite of survival. Uh-huh. Well, damage we can repair if we are all alive. It depends on which systems are damaged, Captain. I've been up almost every night for uh, quite a while now thinking of uh, whether or not I made the wrong call avoiding the risk of engaging the Voth in that last system. Perhaps we could have saved some more silver bloods. It is illogical to dwell on the past, Captain. It cannot be changed. But we can learn from it. I think right now being overly cautious is going to cost Starfleet some invaluable knowledge and also potentially mean that we are leaving the threat of this star damaging this sector unaddressed. I think we need to go through. Open a shipwide channel. Channel open, sir. This is Captain Axelin. I don't know why uh, all of you joined Starfleet, but I'd like to think that, uh, like me, to an extent, some of it was because you wanted to go where no one had gone before. Fate, it seems, has given us that opportunity. We have found a frontier that the physicists back at Starfleet have only theorized could even exist. We're going to be taking the Ager through the subspace rift that was recently detected. On the other side is a star more massive than anything our galaxy can even support with its laws of physics, and a civilization that's so advanced we've never seen technology like theirs anywhere before. I just want to make certain that uh, Everyone on the vessel is aware of both the opportunity and the risk that we're engaging here. Everyone to your stations, and let's all bring our A-games. That's all. Close channel. All right, Helms people, lay in a course for the other side of the rift and engage. Well, uh, Jeremy, if you want to take Joy over at this point, because as much as I love playing her, I think you do a better job. Uh, so Esrol and Joy, uh, one of you is taking the lead on this one. Yeah, I walked into that one. Um, it's going to be a daring and a con. The Ager will also assist you with an engine. Well, I think this is probably more a structure security. Yeah, because structure security would be your shielding, which is also in play here. So yeah, the Ager Structure Security, Daring Con from Joy and from Esrol, difficulty of five. All right. We, we are activating Joy. I would like to improve her daring. Yeah, you certainly may do so. Yeah, she definitely needs more daring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't go above Reserve. 12. And... Said the difficulty was five. Five. <laughs> I will pop my determination. Okay. Edge of the envelope. Okay. That'll give us two right off the bat. And I actually think if I have my momentum correctly, you guys are out of momentum at the moment. You don't have just the one. No. Well, luckily, we've got plenty of threat left over. Yeah, I was looking at the good evil 
back. Oh, wait. Okay, those timestamps are cool. All right, so Joy will assist. She does have a focus in starship maneuvers. There's mine. Well, there's six successes already. Uh, Here comes the ship. Seven successes. You guys get two momentum for your trouble. So, uh, we'll let S roll and Joy describe what actually takes place on the bridge as uh, as you slip into the bubble. It's seamless. Every time I do a slight overcorrection, she's right back in there, bringing it back in line. We work so well together. It's scary. So, I don't think it's scary. It was scary how well it works. No, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have thought that. Don't know why, but I just wouldn't have. Thought I'm sure, Anton, that he do, he doesn't mean to uh, say that he was underestimating you, but simply but no, pleased with how things are turning out. I'm just. It was. Sir, it was seamless. It was like she was thinking of my moves as I was maybe even ahead of me doing it. The you feeling know? is mutual, sir. We, I. I was also very pleased. And I was, yes. Well done. So perhaps Ensign Joy has uh, a talent for anticipating the uh, actions and uh, needs of others. Could be. Well, the good news is you are on the other side of the bubble. You are looking at a star 30 times the size of the solar system and an alien facility that uh, has not replied to Hales and uh, is at the very edge of your metaphasic shielding. What is the phrase right. out of the frying pan pop into my mind? Helm, lay in a course to approach that alien facility, but do your best to keep the facility between us and that massive star. Our shields are already stressed to their limits. We don't need to put them through any more than we have to. Uh, sir. So, again, describing the scale of this thing, if it hasn't hit you already, like, you can move and put the facility between you and the star, but even as big as the facility is, and the facility is big, like, scale-wise, it's the size of a galaxy class, so it's a big facility. But even then, you just... This star is too big. It's... No matter what, unless you are literally kissing the hull of this facility, there is no angle in which you are shielded from this star. That is absolutely amazing. I mean, just the sheer size of it, the amount of energy it's outputting, the fact that it's to an extent undergoing fusion so rapidly that it can't be sucked into the black hole at its center. It is indeed a phenomenon of wonderful proportions. But what could possibly be the motivations of an alien race that could harness that much energy but is only keeping it in stasis instead? They must have, have untold stores of energy. What was or that the one? Now that we're closer, is there any sign that the that the uh, that the shielding is somehow decaying? We don't know how old this is, though. One might have to say that it is that, that it could be extremely old. My main concern is they're not responding to hails. Well, what I would Perhaps tell you, uh, Bruce, if you want to spend a momentum to ask the question, I can answer. Yeah, we'd only have a dedicated science officer on the bridge, do we? Well, you had yeah, Astra, and, and then Astra was on the Fritz, so... And you I mean, don't want me doing it. My science is a four, so I can handle science stuff. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, like, quite literally, you can just spend one momentum right yeah. now, and I'll answer that question. Oh, that, that required. Too. Cool, yeah. I, will, I will ask that question, I think. So, if, okay um, if the dating is correct, according to your sensors, this has been around since... About 0.5 billion years after the Big Bang, so it's been around for like 13, 14 billion years. That was my thought. Is there any? Is there any? Uh, you know, sometimes shields get unstable before they fail. Mm -hmm. 
Do we so know what I would if... say is the facility is doing its best, but it seems that there's some fault with the facility that's causing the containment field to fluctuate. And that's why the plasma jets coming from the poles mm -hmm. are starting to crack the subspace bubble. Which means I don't even know what the proper stellar phenomenon is. If this star goes ultra nova, it could absolutely wreak havoc with the barrier between subspace and actual space in the sector we just left. It could potentially even create a tear that expands building momentum. Yes? Potentially, I... Captain. All right, then I think we did make the right call coming here. We've got to figure out a way to make sure this facility stays op operational. We need to find a way to either stabilize the, s stabilize the station or to stabilize the, f the subspace node in a way that it can contain the energy. Well, we have incontrovertible invertible evidence that there were advanced intelligent life forms in this place at least long ago. I hate to leave this ticking time bomb for potentially their descendants to deal with. Even Perhaps, if it doesn't yeah. affect our side of the subspace rift, it might kill billions of life forms here. Indeed. Perhaps, Captain, the station itself may provide answers. As I mentioned yes. before, we are able to penetrate the shield in a way to send transporter beams. If we were able to access the station's computers, we may have a better grasp of the situation. Let's put together an away team. Understood, sir. Composition. Uh, who would you prefer to go? I don't have the same compunctions about using members of the Silverblood crew aboard this alien station. It doesn't contain classified Starfleet information like the Ager does. Maybe we should take the other Vectan, thus leaving the bridge in the hands of yourself and our Vectan. Perhaps even the other Ezreal. Understood, sir. GM, am I, uh, am I uh, over-utilizing the silver blood advantage that we have here? No, I just, I, I have threat and I have complications that are happening. I just have not said anything. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see if the other uh, Ezreal and the other Vectan are willing to join me on an away team, along with perhaps the Doctor. Yeah. I will ask, sir. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I will get up and actually leave and go to Cargo Bay 1. And I go to Sick Bay to get the doctor and pick up some away team gear for myself. And as, uh, Roos, as you're going in the in the turbo lift down past uh, main Sick Bay, you almost hear as if through the walls, You found what? In a what? And as you arrive in Cargo Bay 1, uh, you see that uh, the shelves and rows and rows of crates and blue barrels that can take out a Klingon, they've all been pushed aside and secured. And in the middle of the space is just a giant jacuzzi-like tub kind of a thing for the silver blood to liquid in. I don't know the word for it, but they're, they're in the liquid form is what I'm trying to get at across. Now, there are a few tables and chairs where those who have taken form are chilling out, um, but for the most part, most of the silver blood are in liquid form at the moment. I look around for one that I recognize. Uh, yeah, actually, you see one that represents joy. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> Good day, Anson. Good day, sir. I'm sorry, I, I can't do the thing that this joy that I'm replicating does. I can't do it. I would like to speak with with Commander Vectan, please. Is that all right? Is that possible? Oh, honey, you have visitors. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to narratively say that Vectan emerges from the jacuzzi <laughs> <laughs> yeah he does steps out and co comes down and walks over to you yes commander 
I have two things to speak of. I would like to present the first for your consideration. And then I'll get to the matter at hand. Proceed. Also, with well, as part of this, I would like to summon Astra, if that is acceptable to you. I take no issue with this. Astra. The Aegir corrupted version, quote unquote, uh, appears again in that sandstorm like form. One of our crew is ill. He gestures to Astra. I would like to present a possibility. To keep it short, what if our ill Astra were to merge with one of you? I don't know this, the specifics. You and she could speak on this much better than I. But... And you don't, you needn't answer now, I realize this is sudden, but it is something to consider and perhaps discuss, if you would be willing to consider and discuss that. To merge with myself? Or one of your compatriots, perhaps one of your compatriots that hasn't chosen a form yet. Again, I apologize for my ignorance as to how these things work. You ask much. It will take time to consider. Of course. He looks at Astra and, like, kind of gives her, like, the, the once over, like, gauging her a little bit. Yeah, Astra just again, stoically stands looking back. Again, I. I ask you because you seem to be able to speak for your people, and I seek no particular answer just that you would consider it. And if I offend or am acting improperly, it is purely out of ignorance and care for my crew. I would do the same. In the meantime, the captain wonders if you and your Esrol would like to visit the station we have discovered. He sees it as a as a possible way to maximize our resources. Of course, if that helps us, if that aids us in our ability to survive and potentially limit this threat, I see no reason why we cannot aid you. Understood. He plans to take an away team over to the station. He wishes that you and Esra would join this away team. Is there any danger on this station? As you know, we have only been able to observe, not hear. I will out of characterly explain all of the uh, the pertinent information that we discussed on the bridge. All right. I what? believe that it is as dangerous. It is the unknown, but I don't believe that that it is any more dangerous than being here other than we do not know what is there. The station is old and possibly failing. Repairs may be required. I would go, but I'm not qualified to make them. Of course, and as I retain much of Vectan's skill and memory, I would be an advantageous member of this party. Yes. Very well, I will attend. Esrel? If you wish to attend, you may as well. Um, yes, sir. It's better than staying here on the ship, not doing anything. Indeed. Once you return, you may wish to you may wish to explore how well you work with Ensign Joy. I believe you would find it illuminating. Um, we'll definitely ask the other Esrel, Esrel Prime, Esrel Prime. Um, about that interaction. Um, has he had a chance to talk to you about getting us literature of the different races within the Federation? 
Not yet, but I don't believe that accessing non-classified archives would be difficult. Perhaps I'll ask immediately. Perhaps holographic imagery as well. That would be slightly more difficult. As you may be aware, Holodeck 2 is unavailable. So our resources in the, in that realm are reduced. Astro there are speaks also... up real quick. Uh, if I may, sir. Of course. I am able to project in this space and I do have access to the non-classified databases still. I could provide this service to your people. We would greatly appreciate it. Alright, well, I've never been a Give teacher me... before, but I I'm suppose... sure you'll do fine. Take it There's from a first one... time for everything, I believe the humans say. Roost quirks as well. Take it from one teacher to another. You'll do fine. But I must clear it with the captain. I of walk course. away. Roost to Captain Axelin. Axelin. Vectan and Esro have agreed to accompany you. I have oh, one great. request, however. Yes? May Astra be allowed to teach the other Silverbloods about ra the various races of the Federation using non-classified archives only. Of course. Which Astra? The Aegir Astra, sir. Understood. I believe, it, I believe it would be an excellent use of resources. I wonder if it's possible to get the uh, Proxima's Astra on the away team. I will inquire, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Out. Excellent out. <clears throat> Astra, you may proceed, but before you do, I have one question. Go ahead. Do you believe that it would be possible for the Proxima instance of Astra to accompany the away team? If you use one of our portable holographic emitters, yes. Downsides, negatives, potential problems? Well, from my understanding is that we're punching through a shielding with a radion beam? There is a chance the holographic emitter could go offline or experience a malfunction during transport. Would that result in damage to the Astra entity or just deprive the captain of her company? Both? Neither? I'm not sure. I don't have access to those systems to make that judgment call anymore. Understood. Thank you. Please proceed. And uh, Sandstorm Astra kind of shuffles over to the side and turns herself into an Andorian and says, this is an Andorian. They come from the planet and then goes into a long spiel about the Andorians. I reach out and touch the Astra on the shoulder and, wh and whisper softly, this is just as important for you and for them. Her, like, holographic antennae turn to you in a very Jeffrey Coombs way, but she doesn't stop her monologue because nope. she's she's paying attention to you, but she's also very set on keeping her monologue. Nope, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, he walks away. All right. Commander, get... Lieutenant, shall we? Out of character, when we get to the Klingon opera, I want a video clip of that. <laughs> Fair. All right. Well... I think that now that we have our away team of two silver blood and two normal crew, well, I guess it's just one normal crew because it's just the captain going. Well, also high long, high long, high long. Yeah, yeah, I'm inviting high long and uh, theoretically a, a version of Astra. So a lot of simulated crew members on this mission. Mm -hmm. And then we have Roos and the regular Esrol and regular Vectan also on the Aegir while this is all going on. I like it. I like it. But I tell you what, I think. Going to the station, the beam out sequence is where we'll end this part because this is going to be a part two. Because um, there's a lot of moving parts here, and I want to make sure we get it right because we only have about 15 more minutes before I got to run. So I think that's where we'll call it for tonight. All right. Yeah. Good session. Yeah. Let's hope we don't break our backup Astra too, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> break everything. Yeah, and it's great because we've actually hit on a lot of the things I was wondering how I was going to get it included, and we've actually hit on a lot of good points. So, 
All right. Well, uh, Twitch stick around because we're going to raid some about YouTube. We'll see you later. Bye, YouTube.